Today, I'm giving myself a challenge. I wanna see if I can build an entire application in just a few hours with the assistance of AI and then actually push it out into production and deploy it. Now, a lot of times on this channel, you guys watch really in-depth tutorials from me. In those situations, I already have the code written and I'm just walking through it line by line. Rather than doing that, I want to show you what my real development process looks like. So from planning, building, errors, and then eventually into deployment, and how I do that as an experienced developer with the assistance of AI. So this will be a shorter video, more of kind of a highlight reel of me building this application, but I think it will be interesting and hopefully I can share a lot of best practices and tips with you. So with that said, let's hop over to the computer and get started. So like the video title says, I'm not going to be using VS Code or Cursor for this video, I'm going to be using Warp. Now I've talked a lot about Warp on this channel, I've demoed them, I've gone into in-depth tutorials and they are a long-term partner of this channel. However, I've never really built a full-scale application with it, so I decided today we can try that out and see if this tool is actually capable of doing that. Now, if you're not familiar with Warp, this is an agentic development environment. It looks kind of like a terminal, and their basic philosophy is that we're really moving more towards prompting rather than writing a ton of manual code. So rather than having 80, 90% of the screen taken up by a code editor, most of it should be actually interfacing with the agent. And then, of course, they have the ability to edit code, a bunch of other features, etc. But it's pretty cool, and I'll kind of show you how it works in this video. Anyways, let's get started with my project idea. Now, before I jump into anything, I always like to come up with a pretty detailed plan, have a good idea of the tech stack that I'm going to use, as well as what I actually want to build. I always start with an MVP, so a minimum viable product or the minimum number of features that make what I'm building valuable, and then I'll add more to it later. So in my case, I want to build a Discord bot. Now, I have a Discord server right now for my dev launch program. We have a bunch of students in there, and for every student, we create a private channel. And it's very difficult to manage all of those private channels, make sure that we create them properly, but more importantly, to have kind of a history or a log of everything that was said in those channels and pick up the context when we have you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 students, etc. So my idea here is to make a Discord bot that can help me with some of those actions so it can log and store all of the messages that are sent on Discord by who, in what channel, at what time, and then I want to connect an LLM to that so that I can quickly summarize all of the messages or ask questions about kind of a chat or a student and get really detailed information back. So that's kind of my basic idea, and what I want to do now is start fleshing this out. So I'm going to go into Warp. I've just created a new, um, what do you call it, a directory here. So I'm just going to tell it here, create a new readme file where I can start putting my plan, keep it empty. Okay, so when I do it, by default, it's going to know that it needs to go into agent mode here, and then it should make a new file for me inside of this folder. And then I'm going to start kind of using the voice mode here with inside of Warp, dumping my thoughts, and then starting to come up with a more structured plan. That's because I find these models always perform better when we have a document that outlines what we want to do. And then I also want to start creating some rules for this project in terms of the tech stack that we're going to use, uh, the code process, how we're going to split up files, etc., to make sure this actually stays clean. Because I'm not trying to vibe code here, I'm just using AI kind of as an assistant. So what I'm going to do here is just type ls, we see the readme file, if I want I can open this by just control and click, we can see that it's empty right now, and then I'll go on the left hand side and I'll start going into voice mode and kind of asking it what I want. Okay, so I'm going to go voice input, and I'm just going to essentially stream my thoughts, kind of what I'm thinking, and then have it give me a structure. Okay, so I just used the voice mode here. I got a pretty detailed prompt, and I'm going to go ahead and press enter, and I'm going to ask it to create the plan here with O3 because it can actually do kind of a plan before it starts um, creating all of this stuff. And you can see it's going to analyze our Discord bot requirements and create the structure plan for me. All right, so let's wait for that plan, and then I'll be right back. All right, so I can see that it's made the plan here, so I'm just going to open up the file, make sure it looks good. I'm going to adjust any of the stuff that I need and then we'll continue from there. All right, so I just took a second here and I generated a rules file for this particular project, usually best practice when you're doing any AI coding, just so that I have all of the stuff specified. So I want to use Python 3.11, always use UV, I want to have all the tech stack in here, just to make sure that I have as much context as possible and that the model's not going to steer wrong. Now that I've done that, I also show you that if I go to MCP servers here in Warp, I created the GitHub MCP server connection. So I'm just going to ask it to initialize a new GitHub repo for me just so that I can start storing everything um, and not lose any of my work. So I'm going to say init a new remote git repo for me for this project. 
I'm gonna let it do that and then we're gonna move on. And also if while we're doing that, we can proceed without the plan, I can actually open up a new window here and start doing some coding as well because I'm able to have multiple agents running in parallel here. So I can start doing some work in another tab while I wait for this to go. And we can see here that it might ask me to run the tool. So let's go ahead and press on run uh, and I'll continue from there. So the setup is pretty much done. I've got the rules file. I connected to my MCP server. I have the plan generated. I know at a high level what it is that I want to do. Now what I'm going to do is start building this step by step. So rather than trying to code the entire thing at once, I want to start by just being able to connect to a Discord server and just log some of the messages. So we'll start with a basic kind of database connection and just actually receiving some messages. Then we'll start adding adding the various commands. So same thing, I'm going to go in voice mode here because I prefer using the voice input and I'm going to tell it to begin with that step and then we'll proceed after that. So from this point, I'm going to throw the face cam off just because it's easier to work without the lights on. And what I'm going to do now is start connecting to the Discord server. So I'm going to make a kind of sample Discord server in a second so that I can test this out before I put it in my production one. And then it's giving me a few steps that I need to follow here. So I'm going to leave that open in one tab. And from here, I'm also just going to have a look at some of the code to make sure that this is what I want. So let me open up the main.py, for example. I'm also going to open up the bot.py. Okay, so we just have this hello from Discord bot. Okay, let's close this one here. And I want to just quickly read through this. I also can, of course, modify this code if I want to. Okay, so this looks fine for right now. I also want to open up the requirements.txt file. So let's open that in warp. And this has a bunch of stuff that we don't need. It has all these hashes. So I'm just going to tell it to clean that up and then we'll go from there. So I successfully got the bot in my test Discord server here. Now what I'm going to do is just type uv run and then bot.py and let's see if this works uh, and we got an error. Okay, so let's debug from here. So I just forgot to do one of the settings here when I was setting up the bot. I needed to enable some of the privileged intents. So it looks like it slid in, let's say, hello world. Okay, and it picked up that message, YouTube test, tech with Tim, hello world. Okay, and let's go here. Let's make a new channel, you know, Tim channel or something. Okay, let's go another test. Looks like it's working. Okay, we can see the bot is connected and that's a good start. All right, so we've got the logging set up. Now I want to start storing this stuff in the database and kind of move on to the next step of my plan. So let's shut this down for right now uh, and let's keep going from here. So I just enhanced this a little bit just to get a bit more information. So we have the metadata, let's test again. And we can see that we're kind of getting all of this stuff printing out. So I can see the user as well as the channel that they're typing in, the you know type of the message, etc. Okay, cool. So let's shut that down. So moving on now, I want to start setting up the database. So I actually just set up a database here in Linode. This is typically what I use for databases. So what I'm going to do is copy all of this information, give it over to Warp and tell it to start logging and storing all of the messages based on the database schema that we set up in the plan. Uh, and then we'll have the database kind of deployed and ready to go. And then later we can deploy out the full uh, kind of bot application. So it's been a few minutes here, but I have successfully got the database connection to work. There was a little bit of debugging I had to do there because the connection was messing up. I had to add my IP address as a valid connection. We can see we got the logging here and now we're actually storing messages in a PostgreSQL database. So if I go here, hello world, what is up? You can see that the bot grabs that, picks it up what channel it was in and then stores it. Let's do one in here. Hello world. And then same thing picks up the general channel and then it should store that for us as well. Okay, cool. So what I want to do now is I want to start setting up some of the commands. So to test to make sure the messages are correct. So I'll start setting up some filters where we can get the past messages for a user and for a channel. And then once that works, we can add the AI component, start summarizing it, storing it in the database, etc. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that started. All right, so I've been working away here and I just got one of the first commands to work, which allows us to see the history of messages. So for example, I can go exclamation point history, you know, at Tim, and then I can do something like, let's look in the general channel so we can filter by channel and by person. When I do this, it should give me all the messages by myself that are in that channel. We can see that it pops up here. We can also do something like history, limit equals two. This will just give us the two most recent messages. So let's see right here and we get the two messages. Okay, so that's a pretty good start. At least we can get the recent messages. We can filter by channel. Now that we have that, what I wanna do is add the AI component where essentially we can just ask a question like what has Tim been talking about in this particular channel? And then it will give us the response back. So let me add that and I'll be right back.
All right, so it's been a little bit of time here, and I was able to get the AI integration working now in terms of summarizing the different messages. So again, a little bit of back and forth here, but now you can see I have this summarize command. I can pass a channel, or I can pass a name. I can pass some limits, and then it gives me kind of this nice embedded message. I got to make it look a bit better, but you know we have key decisions, main topics discussed, you know multiple commands related to viewing chat history, summarizing messages because that's what we were doing, and then I just made a new channel where I was just talking about some crypto stuff just to make sure this is going to work. And then if I go here, you can see it says mentions Bitcoin reaching 100K, you know, excitement and interest in crypto uh, currency, et cetera, et cetera. So that is pretty cool. That's kind of the main thing that I wanted to get. Now I'll add one more command that allows me to kind of like ask a question about the chat so it can give me direct feedback. And then from there, I think we're good to go ahead and deploy this and actually start using it in production. All right, so a few prompts later, and we got this new feature where I'm able to do this ask command. We can see Tim's birthday is on July 20th. I just put that in the channel. And then if I do something like, you know, ask, and then I'm gonna have to do the channel. So Tim channel, how old is Tim? Uh, let's see if it can give us that result. We're just using a simple LLM call here. This should just take one second. And it says Tim is turning 25 years old, boom. There you go, so the ask feature is working. Okay, so that to me is pretty good. Obviously there's a few you know modifications we can make, we could improve it, but for now I wanna move to the deployment. So we already have the database deployed and pretty much what we need to do is just deploy the bot on some service where it will be running 24 seven. So we have a few different options on how to do that. What I think I'm gonna do here is just use Railway. I used this in a previous video. It's very straightforward to do the deployment of a Python application. So let me actually go here. Let's open up a new tab. I'm gonna say, how can I deploy this app with Railway? And I'll get this to give me the instructions on how to do that. So let's go proceed without a plan because I just wanted to tell me what to do. And then we'll go ahead and start the deployment process. All right, so it gave me some instructions here. It looks like it should be pretty straightforward here to do it from the web, but I think there are a few files that we potentially need to set up here. So I just asked it, can you set up my project to have the correct files to work on Railway? So it should hopefully do that. We'll use the MCP server to push this up to GitHub to make sure that we have the uh, most valid version here in our GitHub repo and then we should be good for the deployment. We might need to change a few things in terms of the IP addresses, the environment variable files, etc., and then we should be good to go. All right, so I just finished doing the deployment here and we can see that we're getting the log showing up in Railway, the Discord bot is online, and really, that's pretty much it. I mean, we just completed the entire application. I really hardly wrote any code manually at all. I pretty much used the AI to do that. And the reason why I was able to be relatively successful here and it didn't take me too long to get this running is because of all of the setup steps that I did, right? Planning, adding the rules, going step by step, not trying to generate massive amounts of code at once, also, I was obviously checking through a lot of the code, so I would you know, go into a separate window here, type ls, for example, take a look at some of the files. You can see now at this point, we have the Docker file, the initialized DB, the LLM, you know, pyproject.toml, blah, blah, blah. And I was checking these, making some small modifications as I went uh, directly here inside of Warp. So overall, I would say this challenge was pretty successful. Obviously, there's a lot more work that we could do on this application, but for now, I'm super happy with that, and I think I'm gonna end the video here. Let me know what you guys thought. If you want more videos like this, then definitely leave a comment down below. And I look forward to seeing you in another video.